All right, sorry about that. We just had a little bit of technical difficulties. So this will kind of be the um, wrap up of the uh, presentation that we we're going through the lesson. Um, basically, the last two things we got to go over are just the two real short assignments that you are going to be responsible for. Um, so where we left off is that you have your choice of two short stories to read and comment. Um, so once you choose either of those stories to read, you're going to think about them and think about how did these end and what examples of foreshadowing may have popped up in the beginning to kind of give a clue as to how this story would end. Well, I'm having a little difficulty bringing up the PowerPoint, but we can actually bring up the, the worksheet that you'll be doing, and it really has exactly the same thing on it. Um, so if you look into your... Um, into your Schoology, you can find this particular worksheet there. Um, and obviously we will also put up the PowerPoint without all of that stuff on it. Um, Cause I'm not sure why we're not getting, for some reason that PowerPoint isn't open at all right now. But, um, but you can see here what you're gonna be doing. And the first one is after you've, you've read that one on Common Lit, um, is that you're gonna be writing about just like how we found those things in our particular, in that little micro fiction that we showed, you're going to be doing kind of the same thing here. So, Mr. Strebel, do you want to read that one for them? Yeah, sure. Uh, foreshadowing is necessary in a short story because it prepares the reader to accept what happens later in the story. In a well-written paragraph, explain how the author of your story prepares you to accept the ending of that story. Uh, what hints were given, how do those hints help the story make sense? Uh, use at least two specific examples to support your thoughts. Yeah, so um, the examples can be quotes, um, and I encourage quotes. Uh, but what I want you to think about is what prepares you. So um, you're going to see, you know, that there's some things that the old ladies do in the landlady, or there's some things about the host and about the setting in the mask of red death that are, that really make it so that even though we may or may not like the ending of the story, um, but we accept the ending of the story. We understand that that's the way that it would end. Um, and we, we definitely can sense that there's something else going on and it's because of this foreshadowing that happens. And so that's what I'm looking for you to do is to do that and just to answer right here. Um, also, if you don't have the worksheet or you're doing this in some other way, you are welcome to just answer this on a, a Word document or even write it on paper and, and then um, just send me a picture of it. And that would work also. And if you're waiting for those um, flash drives to come to you, which will be coming, um, if you're waiting for the flash drive, you can either take this whole thing and put it on the flash drive, you know, pull it offline and, and put it on that way, or it will be on the flash drive for you to do. Um, or you can take a picture and put, put the picture onto the flash drive. Um, any which way that you can get anything to me, I will accept. All and right. Then, and, uh, go ahead. And, uh, you all set? All right. Then, yeah, lastly, what you're going to do is you're going to think about your own story that you're writing. Think about the event or events that are big enough in your story that warrant some foreshadowing. What are the big things that um, are going to be in your story that you need to prepare the reader for? So, in a little written paragraph, uh, explain those events that you must foreshadow. Um, think about what tactics you're going to use to prepare uh, your reader for these events. Give at least two specific examples from your own story. So think about what you want to include as that thing that is the foreshadowing, uh, whether it's setting, whether it's something that's said, whether it's language that's just written in there. Think about what tactics you want to use and think about what big thing in your story is worthy of foreshadowing. And that's the last bit is, um, of course, once you have that outline for the story and you've figured out like, this is what I want to foreshadow and this is how I want to foreshadow it. I want you to kind of go into your story. So if you have an outline, which is totally fine, if you have an outline of your short story, I want you to go into that outline and be like, I need to foreshadow this event. And, and if you have a specific idea of how you're going to do that, write it in there. Um, it'll just make writing your rough draft easier. If you've already written your rough draft, 
which um, I know was sort of our over break work was to kind of to do one of those two things. Um, but if you have a rough draft already written, um, then I want you to go onto that rough draft and say, did I really give hints to my different uh, items of what would happen so that my readers are prepared to accept this? Um, you know, usually in today's day and age, we don't just show up at people's door. There has to be like the phone call that happens. Or if somebody does, we feel a little weird about it, you know? Do people get weird vibes? Do they get all of that sort of thing? Um, and make sure you've explained those things in your story. And if you haven't, now is the time to put it in there. So that's really the uh, written work for the week. Um, so it's to for you to go through, come up with these two one paragraph responses, apply it to your story, and of course to do the common lit. So that's really all I've got um for you for this lesson um i hope that uh you know all of this makes sense to everybody again if you have any questions uh you are more than welcome to you know ask a question on remind uh or to send me an email or mr strebel an email and um you know we will be more than happy to talk to you and to to help you through anything and if you are like well i want to kind of for you to see stuff we can do it through this Zoom format um, for anybody who has the ability to do that. Uh, so you can be like, hey, can I see this? I want to show you this and I can help you out one on one or Mr. Strebel could help you. Um, just talk to us and we can set something up for that. So hope everybody's having a good time. Stay connected, but keep it virtual so that you're not actually seeing and physically touching anyone. But, uh, you know, we're thinking about you. We miss you. Um, so we'll see everybody. You. See you later. Hi. Hi.